One last thing. This has been an incredible week for me. Just one month after launching my very own program here on CNN, the network gave me the privilege of spending a whole week with you in prime time, and it's been a great honor. A special thanks to all the producers and the bookers who made it possible. But you know, there was one interview in particular this week that stood out to me, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. Ken and Beth Melton were my guests here on Tuesday night talking about the loss of their daughter, Brooke. It happened four years ago this week. Brooke was a nurse. It was her 29th birthday. And four days prior, her 2005 Chevy Cobalt shut off while she was driving. She lost control of the power steering and her brakes, then had the car serviced at the local dealership. They returned it to her, saying that all was fixed. Then, on her birthday, she was traveling on Highway 92 in Paulding County, Georgia. It was a rainy night. She was driving 58 miles an hour on a two-lane road, and there was a collision. The accident report said that she lost control of the car, she wound up in a creek, and she died. Her parents, the Meltons, hired a lawyer. The lawyer hired experts who were able to determine that the key had slipped from the on position to the accessory position three seconds before the accident, which would have shut off her power steering and brakes just like it happened four days prior. In their lawsuit, it was revealed that GM was aware of the problem. In fact, even before the car was sold to Brooke in 2005. Why wasn't the problem fixed? Well, a 2005 memo cited by lawmakers this week said it was because redesigning the ignition switch would have cost 90 cents per car. There's still much to determine. But the reason that Mary Barra, the CEO of GM, just testified this week begins with the Meltons and their search for truth and the sleuthing of an engineer named Mark Hood who was hired by their lawyer. It was Hood who pierced together that the original part from Brooke Melton's car did not match store-bought replacements despite the same identification number. And among the questions that need to be answered is not only why GM failed, but the Meltons also want to know why did the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration fail, which regulates auto safety. Both in 2007 and in 2010, NHTSA failed to pursue complaints about non-deployment of airbags in GM cars. This case demands accountability. Accountability not only from GM, but also from the government entity responsible for the automaker's oversight. We know what we know today only because of the Melton's pursuit of justice, their willingness to file a lawsuit. Our civil justice system, it's often maligned. But you know, it remains a great check on our free enterprise system. Often, it serves as a more vigilant force than the government itself. Whether it's NHTSA being slow to force the recall of defective cars, the SEC not reigning in the forces of Wall Street that brought about the bank collapses, the FDA in delaying taking products off the market like Vioxx, or maybe SIPSA and their hesitancy to recall defective products like BB guns. So here's a thought. The next time a jury duty notice arrives, instead of thinking about how that service can be avoided, instead consider the power, consider the importance of the civil justice system. Think about Mr. and Mrs. Melton. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Smirkanish. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9, regular time. Our whole new show will be ready to go.